you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego. And welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we climb up this hump day hill to explore total wellness in order for you to reach for your goals and in order to live your dream life. And today we're going to continue discussing this amazing excerpt I read recently that said, train to be strong, not skinny, eat to be nourished, not thin, work out to build, not burn. You have one body. Don't spend your whole life tearing it down in the name of looking better. Direct your energy and your effort into caring for it, fortifying it and strengthening it. As the saying goes, if you care about the way you look, it may cost you your health, but if you care about your health, you'll probably love the way you end up looking. You need to start moving your body meaningfully every single day, period. Stand up and stretch every hour, get outside and go for a walk, hit the gym and strength train, do some self body work at home. The human body thrives with motion. The more movement, usually the better. And on this Wellness Wednesday episode, we're going to discuss working out to build, not burn. Let's explore why exercise should be viewed beyond just burning calories or achieving a certain physique. Exercise offers numerous health benefits beyond just calorie burning. It does do this, but not to the extent that most people give it credit for. Regular exercise lowers the risk of heart disease and diabetes by improving cardiovascular health, by regulating blood pressure, and by enhancing your insulin sensitivity, which is essentially the flow throughout the body. The better things flow throughout your body, the more healthy you're going to be. Exercise helps with this. Exercise also reduces the risk of certain cancers by promoting healthy cell growth and function while boosting the immune system. Essentially, it's killing off your weak and dying cells, strengthening your younger and stronger cells. Furthermore, physical activity releases endorphins, neurotransmitters that elevate your mood and reduce feelings of stress, anxiety, and depression. Kelly McGonigal calls these hope molecules. As you exercise, you release these hope molecules all throughout the body. It enhances your cognitive function by increasing your blood flow to the brain, promoting the growth of new neurons, and improving your memory and concentration. And lastly, of course, exercise strengthens your muscles, your bones, improving your balance and coordination, and that enhances your overall physical function, which definitely contributes to your longevity and a higher quality of life as you age. So let's expand on the multitude of health benefits offered by exercise beyond just the calorie burning and the physical appearance. Cardiovascular health is a huge aspect here. Regular exercise is so vital for maintaining your cardiovascular health. Aerobic activities such as jogging, cycling, swimming, and especially dancing helps to strengthen the heart muscles, improve blood circulation, and overall lower your blood pressure. Exercise also enhances the efficiency of the cardiovascular system, the efficiency, reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, and other cardiovascular conditions. Along those lines, your lung function is improved. Physical activity improves lung function by increasing lung capacity and the efficiency with which your lungs buffer oxygen and carbon dioxide. Aerobic exercise in particular promotes deeper breathing and improves oxygen uptake, which enhances your respiratory health and reduces the risk of respiratory diseases such as COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and things like asthma. Next, exercise helps with your bone and muscle strength. Weight-bearing exercises, things like resistance training, weightlifting, and bodyweight exercises, these help strengthen your bones and muscles. These activities stimulate bone remodeling, they increase bone density, and they enhance your muscle mass and your strength. So by maintaining strong muscles and bones, exercise reduces the risks of things like osteoporosis and sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss, and things like fractures. 
It also helps to improve your immune function. Regular physical activity boosts the immune system, making the body more resistant to things like infections and illnesses. Exercise stimulates the production of immune cells, antibodies, and anti-inflammatory cytokines, which enhances immune surveillance and response. Your immune system becomes better at doing what it's supposed to do. While intense or prolonged exercise may temporarily suppress your immune function, moderate intensity exercise has been shown to improve immune function and reduce the risk of upper respiratory tract infections. So yes, high intensity exercise creates this slight deficit in your immune function, but the rebound from that does help depending on your recovery, making sure that you get enough recovery there. Moderate intensity and zone two cardio, nice light exercise actually just overall improves your immune function. Next, your muscle development and your body composition is definitely a factor here where you define your muscles, where you improve your body composition by dropping body fat and increasing muscle mass. Instead of focusing solely on weight management like most people do, the emphasis here should shift to building muscle and improving that body composition through strength training and resistance exercise. By engaging in this resistance training, lifting weights, you can begin to increase your muscle mass, also enhance your muscular strength and your endurance, and then in turn sculpt a leaner, more defined physique. Yes, it gives you that better physical appearance, but on the backside, all these other benefits are there. Unlike traditional cardiovascular exercise, which a lot of people think is the, the goal here, just going out and running for long periods of time, but that does temporarily burn calories and especially burns more calories than let's say strength training, but strength training stimulates muscle growth and overall over time improves your metabolic rate leading to a greater calorie expenditure when you're at rest. So we're thinking long-term, not short-term here. This metabolic advantage coupled with a balanced diet, rich in proteins and nutrients, this promotes a sustainable approach to achieving a strong muscular body composition. Additionally, building muscle contributes to a higher BMR, basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories your body burns keeping you alive if you were to do nothing but stay in bed all day long, making it easier to maintain a healthy weight and a good bo body composition over time. Therefore, the focus should shift from burning calories right then and there to building muscle. We are not over fat, we are under muscled, transforming the body from the inside out and promoting long-term health and vitality. And then again, chronic disease prevention. Engaging in regular physical activity reduces the risk of developing these chronic diseases that are plaguing our society right now. Heart disease, type two diabetes, certain cancers. Exercise helps to control your blood sugar levels, which is about improving your insulin sensitivity, lowering your blood cholesterol and your triglyceride levels, reducing the risk factors associated with all of these chronic conditions. Additionally, regular physical activity has been linked to a lower incidence of colon cancer, breast cancer, and other types of cancer. So good for you here. Mental health and cognitive function is one of the biggest health benefits that exercise offers. It has profound effects on your mental health and your cognitive function. Physical activity stimulates the release of endorphins called serotonin and dopamine. These are neurotransmitters that promote feelings of happiness, relaxation, and well-being. And regular exercise reduces stress, anxiety, and depression, which helps to improve your sleep quality, enhance your cognitive function, your memory, your attention, your executive function. All of these things are so, so important and they get more important as we age. So exercise is not just about burning calories or achieving a certain physique that you're trying to go for. Exercise is a cornerstone of overall health and well-being. And by incorporating regular physical activity into your lifestyle, you can reap the numerous health benefits, including that cardiovascular function, lung function, bone and muscle strength, your immunity, your weight management is a factor here, chronic disease prevention, and then all of those mental health and cognitive function benefits. I want to talk a little bit about functional fitness. Functional fitness 
It refers to the ability to perform daily tasks and activities with ease, with efficiency, and without undue strain or risk of injury. These activities encompass a wide range of movements that are essential for maintaining your independence and your quality of life as you age. Whether it's going out to the store and lifting the grocery bags, or bending down to tie your shoes, or squatting up to pick up a child, or reaching for an item that's up high on a shelf, or maybe it's just simply walking upstairs. Functional movements are an integral part to performing your everyday tasks. And as we age, maintaining functional fitness becomes increasingly important for preserving your independence, for preventing falls and injuries, and enhancing your overall quality of life. Functional fitness exercises focus on strengthening the muscles and the joints involved in all of these movements that we're talking about, which help to improve your mobility, stability, balance, and coordination. Let's go into those a little bit more. The benefits of functional fitness. Number one, improved mobility. Functional fitness exercises target a wide range of muscle groups and joints, promoting flexibility, which is the ability to get into a big range of motion, and then mobility, which is your ability to control that flexibility throughout all the joints in your body. This enhanced range of motion allows for a smoother, more efficient movement during your daily activities, reducing the risk of feeling stiff and feeling joint pain. Imagine someone who regularly performs functional fitness exercises like squats, lunges, and shoulder mobility drills. And as a result, they find it easier to bend down and tie their shoes. They find it easier to reach overhead and grab items off of a shelf, uh, to twist around to look behind them while driving or grab something out of the back seat without experiencing discomfort or limitations in movement. This would be a game changer. That is what improved mobility offers. Number two benefit would be enhanced stability and balance. Functional movements challenge the body's ability to maintain stability, be stable, and to find balance, improving what's called your proprioception, your ability to have awareness of your body in space, proprioception, and also reducing the risk of falls and injuries. By strengthening muscles like in your core or the muscles of your lower body, these are all involved in balance and stability and functional fitness exercises help individuals maintain equilibrium and control in various positions and environments. So for this, imagine someone is practicing things like single leg balance exercises, like a single leg RDL, or if you are doing something on a BOSU ball, these things develop better balance and stability, enabling them to confidently navigate uneven terrain during things like a hike or to maintain balance while carrying groceries up the stairs or to avoid stumbling on a slippery surface. That is what the benefit of stability and balance brings. A third benefit of functional fitness is your increased strength and your endurance. Functional fitness training emphasizes functional movements that engage multiple muscle groups simultaneously. By progressively overloading the muscles through resistance exercises, people can build strength and stamina that translates directly to improved performance in your daily activities. So consider someone incorporating movements like push-ups, squats, any variation of rows into their routines. Over time, they will notice improvements in their ability to lift heavy objects without strain, carry groceries for longer distances without fatigue, and sustain physical activity throughout the day without feeling overly tired. And again, this is an upward spiral. The more you do these things, the better you feel, the stronger you get, and then the more and more it happens. So it's the opposite of if you don't use it, you'll lose it. It's whatever gets used gets strengthened. The next benefit is joint health and injury prevention. Functional fitness exercises promote joint health by strengthening the muscles and the connective tissues that support and stabilize your joints. This reduces the risk of overuse injuries, tendonitis, tendinosis, and musculoskeletal imbalances, ensuring optimal joint function and longevity. So visualize someone performing exercises that target muscles around their knees, their hips, their shoulders, things like leg lifts, hip bridges, or banded pull-aparts. 
And as a result, they experience reduced discomfort in these joints. They have fewer instances of overuse injuries during activities like running or lifting, and they have a better all overall joint function and resilience when doing daily activities. So important. Next would be the enhanced cognitive function. Engaging in functional fitness activities that require coordination, balance, and spatial awareness, these can stimulate cognitive function and improve brain health by challenging the mind-body connection. Exercises like this can contribute to cognitive resilience and may help prevent age-related cognitive decline. So imagine someone engaging in complex functional movements like agility drills or coordination exercises or balance challenges. They experience improved concentration, memory, and mental agility, allowing them to quickly adapt to new tasks or situations and maintain sharp cognitive function as they age. And then lastly, improved quality of life. Ultimately, the goal of functional fitness is to enhance your overall quality of life. And it does this by enabling people to perform daily tasks and activities with greater ease, with greater confidence, with greater independence. So investing in functional fitness training, people enjoy a higher level of functional fitness and then vitality and well-being as they age. Imagine someone who incorporates this type of fitness into their daily routine. It Things like gardening become easier, playing with your grandchildren or participating in pickleball. They experience a greater sense of independence and confidence and enjoyment in their daily life. This leads to an overall higher quality of life. So it's important to incorporate functional fitness. I think we can already tell now with all these benefits, you do this by mimicking your real life activities, such as things like squats, lunges, deadlifts, push-ups, rows, and planks. These are all fundamental movements that you should be able to do. These exercises engage multiple muscle groups and joints simultaneously, providing a comprehensive workout that translates directly to improved functional capacity. Additionally, consider adding balance and stability exercises such as single leg squats or single leg balance stands. Things that you can do on an unstable surface like a BOSU ball or a balance pad, or proprioceptive drills, like being able to balance and close your eyes, or throwing a tennis ball at a wall and trying to catch it, or juggling. These things try to improve coordination and reduce the risk of losing balance and falling. So prioritize functional training in your life, and you can enhance your physical capabilities, you can maintain your independence, and you can enjoy a higher quality of life as you age. Next, I think it's so important that we double click on exercise and how it has such powerful effects on your mental health and well being beyond its physical benefits. Physical activity stimulates the release of endorphins, which are these little neurotransmitters that promote feelings of happiness and euphoria, and they help to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. Regular exercise can also improve your sleep quality, which boosts your self-esteem and your confidence. It enhances your cognitive function and, again, alleviates symptoms of mood disorders like depression and anxiety. Let's go a little deeper on these benefits. Benefit number one is endorphin release and mood enhancement. One of the most well-known effects of exercise on mental health is its ability to stimulate the release of endorphins neurotransmitters that act as natural painkillers and natural mood elevators. Endorphins promote feelings of happiness, euphoria, and general well-being, helping to alleviate symptoms of stress, anxiety, and depression, and engaging in regular physical activity, whether it's a brisk walk, a gym workout, or a yoga session, can trigger the release of these endorphins, leading to an immediate mood boost and sense of emotional resilience. Number two, stress reduction and anxiety relief. Exercise serves as a powerful stress reliever, helping to dissipate tension and reduce your cortisol levels. Cortisol is the body's primary stress hormone, and it also helps promote relaxation. Physical activity provides a healthy outlet for pent-up energy and emotions, allowing individuals to channel their stress and anxiety into a productive movement. Whether it's a vigorous workout to release pent-up frustration or calming yoga practice to quiet the mind, exercise offers a natural and effective way to manage stress and anxiety levels. Number three, depression management and prevention. 
Regular exercise has been shown to be an effective strategy for managing and preventing depression. That is a bold statement. Physical activity stimulates the production of neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine. These neurotransmitters play a key role in regulating your mood, your motivation, and your pleasure. By increasing serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain, exercise can alleviate symptoms of depression, improve your mood, and enhance overall emotional well-being. Additionally, the sense of self-accomplishment and self-efficacy gained from engaging in regular exercise can boost your self-esteem and your confidence, providing a positive feedback loop that reinforces your mental resilience. Number four, improve sleep quality. Exercise can have a positive impact on a huge pillar of health, your sleep quality and your sleep quantity, leading to more restful and rejuvenating sleep, which is where all of our recovery happens. Physical activity helps to regulate the body's circadian rhythm, which is your sleep-wake cycle, and it helps to promote the release of melatonin, the hormone that regulates sleep. By expending energy during the day through exercise, People can experience deeper, more restorative sleep at night, leading to increased daytime alertness and cognitive function and overall well-being. When you sleep better, the next day goes better, and it's just an upward spiral from there. Number five, enhanced cognitive function, which we've talked about. Exercise has been shown to enhance cognitive function and your brain health, leading to improvements in your memory, your concentration, and your executive function. Physical activity increases blood flow to your brain, delivering oxygen and nutrients that support neural growth and connectivity. It also stimulates the production of neurotrophic factors, proteins that promote the growth, repair, and maintenance of your brain cells, things like BDNF, which is miracle growth for the brain. Regular exercise has been linked to reduce risk of cognitive decline and many neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, as well as improvements in mood and cognitive performance across your entire lifespan. Number six, alleviation of mood disorders. Exercise can be an effective adjunctive treatment for mood disorders such as depression, anxiety, uh, either alone or in combination with therapeutic interventions. These holistic benefits of exercise including its effects on neurotransmitter function, stress reduction, self-esteem, sleep quality. These benefits of exercise make it a valuable tool for managing and alleviating symptoms of mood disorders. So incorporating regular exercise into a comprehensive treatment plan can enhance overall mental health, complementing traditional therapies such as medication, psychotherapy, and things like that. So when working out to build, not burn, we now have talked about all the physical benefits. We've talked about the emotional, we've talked about the mental, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's talk about how we can implement this into your lifestyle. How does this enhance your lifestyle? Engaging in regular exercise can enhance your overall lifestyle by promoting discipline, by helping with time management and goal setting. Setting fitness goals, whether they are related to strength, endurance, flexibility, or just your overall well-being, these can provide a sense of purpose and motivation. Additionally, exercise can be a social activity allowing you to connect with other people, build relationships, and foster a sense of community and belonging. So let's go a little bit deeper into each of those. Number one on the lifestyle enhancement list is discipline and consistency. Regular exercise requires discipline, and consistency, as it involves making a commitment to prioritize your physical activity into your daily routine. By setting aside dedicated time for workouts and adhering to a consistent schedule, you start to create this discipline and self-control, which can translate into other areas of your life. The habit of regular exercise instills a sense of accountability and responsibility empowering you to stay committed to your goals and overcome obstacles, challenges, and setbacks along the way. Number two, time management and prioritization. Incorporating regular exercise into your lifestyle requires effective time management and prioritization skills. By allocating time for workouts amidst your busy schedule, you learn to prioritize your health and your well-being, recognizing the importance of self-care in maintaining a balanced and fulfilling life. 
and learning to manage your time efficiently to accommodate exercise not only improves your physical fitness, but also enhances your overall productivity and satisfaction with daily life. That old saying comes to mind here, you can't pour from an empty cup. And being able to manage time and prioritize time for working out, this puts it into your head that it is important. It helps to fill your cup so that you can then fill others. Number three, goal setting and achievement. Setting fitness goals, whether they're related to strength, endurance, flexibility, or just overall health and well-being, this provides a framework for personal growth and achievement. By establishing clear, measurable objectives, you give yourself something to strive for and a sense of purpose in your fitness journey. Whether it's mastering a new exercise, improving performance in a specific activity, or reaching a milestone such as running a marathon or completing a challenge uh, when it comes to a Spartan race or something like that, achieving your fitness goals fosters a sense of accomplishment and self-efficacy. Number four, social connection and community. This could be one of the most important ones right here. Exercise can be a social activity that fosters connection and community with others who share similar interests and goals as you. Whether you're participating in a group fitness class, joining a sports team, uh, or simply working out with friends or family members, exercising in a social setting provides motivation, it provides support, camaraderie, and building relationships through physical activity allows you to connect with others on a deeper level. You get to share challenging experiences and celebrate achievements together. This sense of belonging and community enhances your overall well being and makes the fitness journey much more enjoyable and much more fulfilling. And before we conclude this episode here, let's talk about the long term sustainability. Viewing exercise solely as a means to burn calories or achieve a specific physique can lead to unsustainable behaviors and also negative attitudes towards fitness. Instead, focusing on the holistic benefits of exercise, such as all the things that we've talked about today, improved health, well-being, quality of life, this fosters a more positive and sustainable approach to fitness. By finding activities that you enjoy and that align with your values and goals, you are more likely to maintain a consistent exercise routine and reap the long-term benefits of physical activity. The best exercise is the one that you will do long term sustainably. So let's go into some of these things that will help you with that. Number one is your mindset shift mindset shift. Long term sustainability and fitness begins with a mindset shift away from viewing exercise as solely a means to burn calories. Instead of fixating on short term goals or external outcomes such as weight loss or muscle gain, it's essential to focus on the holistic benefits of exercise for overall health and quality of life that you're looking to improve. By embracing a more balanced and inclusive perspective on fitness, you're going to create a positive attitude towards exercise that promotes consistency and promotes enjoyment. Mindset shift. Number two, enjoyment and variety. Sustainable fitness practices involve finding activities that you genuinely enjoy and that you genuinely look forward to and that also align with your interests, your preferences, your lifestyle. Whether it's hiking, dancing, swimming, cycling, or practicing yoga, incorporating activities that bring you joy and fulfillment make exercise feel like less of a chore and more like a rewarding experience. Additionally, incorporating variety into your fitness routine helps to prevent boredom reduces the risk of overuse injuries and stimulates ongoing progress and adaptation. So find something that you like and just have fun with it. Yes, there's going to be probably things that you miss if you just do yoga or if you just do hiking. And that's where you can, when you get more into it, you can start to supplement, but just start with something that you enjoy and that you look forward to. Number two, enjoyment and variety. Number three, flexibility and adaptability. Long-term sustainability in fitness requires flexibility and adaptability to accommodate changes in circumstances in your life, preferences, and then goals over time. Life is unpredictable. Man, is that an understatement. And there will inevitably be periods when your exercise routine may need to be either adjusted or modified due to factors such as work commitments, family obligations, or whatever health considerations might come up. 
By adopting a flexible approach to fitness, you can make modifications as needed while still prioritizing movement and physical activity in a way that fits your current circumstances. So number three, be flexible and adaptable. Number four, consistency and habit formation. Building sustainable fitness habits involve consistent and then incremental progress over time. Rather than striving for perfection or dramatic changes overnight, focus on making small, manageable changes to your daily routine that contribute to your overall goals. Whether it's committing to a regular workout schedule, incorporating daily movement breaks into your day, or prioritizing active hobbies and recreational activities, consistency is going to be the biggest key here to establishing long-term sustainable habits that promote your health and your vitality. Number five, self-compassion and patience. This is one that my clients struggle with the most, self-compassion and patience. Most people overestimate what they can do in a month and underestimate what can really happen in a year. Sustainable fitness practices are rooted in self-compassion and patience, recognizing that progress takes time and that setbacks are a natural part of the journey. Be kind to yourself and celebrate your achievements, no matter how small, while always acknowledging the challenges and obstacles you may encounter along the way. By practicing self-compassion and patience, you're going to create resilience and perseverance, allowing you to stay motivated and committed to your fitness goals in the long run. And number six, lastly, holistic wellness. Ultimately, long-term sustainability in fitness is about prioritizing holistic wellness and finding balance in all aspects of your life. This includes nourishing your body with wholesome foods, prioritizing rest and recovery, managing your stress effectively, and creating those supportive relationships and environments. By taking a comprehensive approach to health and fitness, you're going to create a foundation for long-term well-being and vitality that extends far beyond the confines of any gym or exercise routine. So in wrapping this up, let's reframe our perspective on fitness, aligning it with the ethos of working out to build, not burn. It's not merely about shedding calories or striving for a particular body image. It's about constructing a robust foundation of strength, resilience, and longevity that will serve us well throughout our entire lives. By embracing this mindset, we tap into the holistic benefits of exercise for our overall well-being, and we recognize that each workout is an opportunity to fortify our bodies, to enhance our functional fitness, to nurture our mental health. It's about prioritizing movement that nourishes us from the inside out, fostering a positive relationship with fitness that extends far beyond the gym. Let's take action with intentionality. Let's assess our current approach to fitness and nutrition and ensure that it aligns with our goals of building strength and nourishing our bodies. Let's incorporate regular strength training sessions, nourishing meals, and self-care practices into our daily routines, laying the groundwork for lasting health. Tune into this week's Fuel Up Friday episode, Eating to be Nourished, Not Thin, where we're going to discuss incorporating these nutrient-dense foods into your diet uh, that can help promote feelings of satiety and satisfaction, preventing nutrient deficiencies and overeating, while supporting overall health and well-being, and much more. As we embark on this journey of self-improvement, let's stay true to our principles of working out to build. Let's celebrate our progress, no matter how small those little wins are, and embrace the process of growth and transformation. Let's build lives filled with strength, resilience, and purpose. Are you ready to rise to the challenge? Let's build something extraordinary, one workout at a time. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wellness Wednesday episode of the Live in the Dream podcast. Share the knowledge that you gained with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps a ton if you could post a screenshot of this episode on your social media stories with one takeaway that you learned. Tag me at Live in the Dream underscore podcast or at Coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have decided to work out to build, not burn. We want to know. 
Message us with any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team, topics that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.